of your life, baby. What is that? The Eagles have to be able to match that intensity. He's doing it, Tom, baby. Leave it all on the field. You got really, to feel it. Oh, this is fun. What a game we got. Do you got your popcorn ready? Monday Night Countdown is delivered by UPS. The stars are shining bright in Big D for a colossal early season NFC showdown between a pair of one of those squads. A special night in Dallas as Monday Night Football kicks off the final season at one of the NFL's iconic stadiums. It's been said that there's a hole in the roof so the God can look down on the Cowboys. If that's the case, they'll like the view tonight. They'll see Tony Romo fire at any time and across the field he'll see Donovan McNabb the same happy in a good place ready to fire at any time it's the Cowboys hosting the Eagles on Monday Night Football and welcome to Monday Night Captain everybody 90 minutes to get you set for the birds and the boys I'm Chris Berman along with Coach Mike Ditka played for both squads. Keyshawn Johnson played for one squad. Chris Carter played for one squad. Tom Jackson. Didn't play for either one of them. You were looking down no, through the roof. Down. I know what you were doing. <laughs> Mort will be by. And, of course, our guys at the stadium, and that would be Stu, Steve, and a home game for Emmett tonight. Mm -hmm. And we have a cast of thousands to come. Plus... Music celebrating America's Hispanic heritage as the NFL and ESPN kick off Hispanic Heritage Month. Coach... You played in the first Monday night game in the history of the Cowboys. That was at the Cotton Bowl. Hello. Mm -hmm. You guys actually lost 38 nothing to St. Louis. I remember it. I had the Cowboys. <laughs> I had the Cowboys plus 37. Well, you want to go on and where we ended up? <laughs> yeah, you did okay. We went to the Super Bowl, I believe. The first Monday night game ever at Texas Stadium was a win over the Lions. You mm -hmm. played in that as well. So let's go to the 28th one at Texas Stadium. What do you see tonight? Well, you know, I, I think it's very simple. I think this game's going to come down to whichever team can pressure the other team's quarterback the most is going to have the most success. That's just what I believe. I, I think and, and the music, the song, Let's Get Physical, that's what this game should all, be all about. Because, hey, listen, it ain't going to be pretty, gang. If it's pretty, then it ain't going to work. Yeah, and, and, and tonight, for me, I want to see Deshaun Jackson. I think when you look at him, he had terrific first week. But we want to look and see exactly what the Philadelphia Eagles will do to get him in his space, get him on the corners, try to do some things with him to put some points on the board. It's going to be critical, too, but if you really want to watch some, watch Donovan McNabb and his legs because his legs control his football game. Andy Reid, their bootleg, their misdirection, trying to get him on the edge, and the ability to extend the football play, that is the key to Philadelphia Eagles and Donovan McNabb's game. I go Right back to what Coach was talking about, bringing pressure to bear on Tony Romo. Uh, the Eagles have won three out of four, two straight in Dallas. Listen to these numbers. 41.5 completion percentage, 178 passing yards a game, one touchdown, five interceptions, sacked seven times. Hard to throw the football when you're on your back. Tony Romo gets so much pressure from the Eagles that he can't play the same game. Well, there's pressure on both, but I think, you know how we saw those games in the teens yesterday, those big games like with the Patriots and the Jets and the Colts and the Vikings. I'm looking at like that that Bronco Charger game. Could we have a 70 point and 700 yard and and all sorts of uh, TD passes in this? I think we could. Both quarterbacks and offenses have looked really good out of the gates. Now with more from Texas Stadium, let's check in with our crew deep in the heart of Texas, led by Stuart Scott. Stu, good evening. <laughs> Good evening, Boom. As you say, at the 28th Monday night game here at Texas Stadium and the last Monday night game here at Texas Stadium, I'm hanging with the guy who played 11 Monday night games here at Texas Stadium, Emmett Smith. 1,300 yards almost rushing on Monday night here. Nine touchdowns here. Yeah, you didn't know that, did no, you? No, I did. No, I did. And he, Steve no, he was... Young here on Monday night. <laughs> he played 25 games on Monday night and none here. 
None. I'm glad to say that's good. <laughs> you ever played here with this big crown trying to throw downhill to the sidelines? Not fun. Hey, man, I had to run up the crown and down the yeah, crown. Yeah, you so. <laughs> you're standing in the middle of the crown, just all downhill. No wonder you were good running downhill the whole time. Guys, this game tonight, it's ginormous, and it's only week two. Why is it so crucial, so crucial early in the season? You know what? These two teams have to play the best football that they can tonight, and one must come away with the win in order to keep pace with the Giants. The Giants are leading this division right now, and the Cowboys are too busy trying to prove that last year was not a fluke, and therefore they need to make a statement tonight by defeating the, the Philadelphia Eagles, and they must do that in a convincing fashion. Yeah, but I mean, this is a balance of power night, and the best of Division in football. This is the one that's going to make the difference in sending a message. The only one that can send a message tonight, though, is the Philadelphia Eagles that they are going to be contenders for that division title. The Cowboys in mind are front runners, and they've been front runners the last few years, and then they get to January, don't play well. I don't really care if they finish 11 and 5, 12 and 4, going defeated. I won't learn that much about the Cowboys tonight, or really even the whole regular season. It's not till January that we'll find out what this but Cowboy Steve, team is really they about. Got to get to January first. I don't, you'd really doubt that they're going to be less than 11 and 5. This team is at least 11 they and 5. Be there. I really don't care because I know that that's going to happen. Well, All I want to know is what happens in January because that's where the front runners have faded. But I tell you what, January is about three and a half, four months away. I'm so, Until I, we get to January, let's to, deal with tonight. I, that's why I'm excited to see what Philadelphia How can do. That? I already know what Dallas can do. <laughs> After week one, these were the top two offenses in the league. Dallas, 487 yards total offense last week. The Eagles, 522. And even though this is one of the most fierce rivalries in the NFL, the Eagles have owned it since Andy three to ride back in 1999. 13 and five against Dallas since then, including dusting off Big D the last two times they played here in this building. Now with the teams at 20 Report, we go to Susie Calber. Hey Susie, what do T.O. and Romo and company plan to do to change that vibe? Well, how about relying on a balanced attack, and that means the power running game led by Marion Barber. When you talk to his teammates or even the opposing defense about Barber, the word they use over and over again is tough. Even Andy Reid called him a beast. Now, last week, he was knocked out in the third quarter with bruised ribs, but in typical Barber fashion, he practiced all week, didn't even use any protection on those ribs, so he is good to go tonight. And Stuart, when I say good to go, I mean it. Do you know since 2006, only one player has scored more touchdowns than Barber? And that's LaDainian Thomas. That's some pretty good company, Suze. As Chris Berman mentioned, we are kicking off Hispanic Heritage Month here at Texas Stadium. We will have more on Hispanic Heritage Month throughout the show, and hopefully I'm going to try and talk Emmett and Steve into joining that mariachi band. We'll see. Hey, it was a game of the week yesterday. Scoring, drama, a bold coaching move, and a controversial finish. We are all over Chargers and Broncos next. We'll also hear about Donovan McNabb and what T.O. has to say about Donovan, his old teammate. And is Tony Romo the right guy to bring Dallas another Super Bowl title? But as I said, Cowboys Chargers was off the charts. We'll take a look back, including the controversial finish, when we come back. continues this Saturday on NASN with ESPN's College Game Day and three great live matchups. First up, Iowa travel to Pittsburgh. Then Tim Tebow brings his Gators to Tennessee. And finally, in a great non-conference game, Georgia take on Arizona State. Live college football this Saturday only on NASN. Reports have just come in. More details to come on this breaking story. ESPN 360. Whenever you're online, you're at the game. No matter where we go, East Coast, West Coast, North, South, it's game day, baby. We're going to make it happen. Oh, man, this football was a baby. Hey, hopefully both teams run the ball 50 times. Shut your sorry ass, sir. They can't stop me, son. They can't stop me. All they can do is hope they can stop me. 
Druids Glen Golf Resort, voted European Golf Resort of the Year 2005. A golfer's paradise in the Garden of Ireland. Two championship golf courses of contrasting design. The luxurious Marriott Druids Glen Hotel and Country Club, featuring 148 specially appointed guest rooms and a magnificent spa and health centre. Visit our driving range, pro shops, golf academy and get your golfing tips or tuition from our resident PGA teaching professional. The stage is set for the opening weekend of a new NHL season. And this year, the stars are gathering for the premier events in the great cities of Prague and Stockholm. The NHL returns. Catch all the excitement this October on NASN. Monday Night Countdown, delivered by UPS. What can Brown do for you? And in part by State Farm, where great coverage meets great rates. Call, click, or visit and start saving today. How about them Cowboys? How about them Broncos and Chargers? Hi, how you doing? Cutler and Phillip Rivers, not the lengthiest of handshakes. What a game this was. Broncos led the whole way until Darren Sproles. What? Look at him, like between defenders, like a hockey player. 66 yards, the flip pass from Rivers. Two-point conversion, 38-31, San Diego. Second and goal. Cutler rolling out, and uh-oh, it's whistled. Wait a minute, it's incomplete. Is it a fumble? The Chargers have it. They say no, it was whistled. An incomplete pass, and even though it later turned out to be, should have been a fumble call. Whistle stopped it. Broncos retain ball to the chagrin of Norm Turner. Cutler, Eddie Royal. 24 seconds to go. Broncos trail one. We're going for two, says Mike Shanahan. Cutler to the rookie Royal. It's good. And the Broncos beat the Chargers 39-38. North Turner still frustrated the day after. We followed the league protocol. We've sent the plays in to the league that we had in, in question. Uh, you know, we expect to get a response back. Uh, I've talked to Mike Pereira, the head of officials. Anything that we talk about or anything that uh, is discussed in terms of any of the rules or any of the calls isn't going to change this, the outcome of that game. That game's going to be 39-38 forever. It's not frustration in my mind. Uh, obviously, you're pissed, and then you know that n no matter what you do, that ain't, that's not going to change. Well, it's not going to change. And more, we bring you in last night. We, you had it right away. That Ed Hockley, who's one of the best referees in the game, said uh, it was a mistake. That it should have been ruled a fumble, but the whistle happened. And so today, the league reaction to the fumble that was it. What do we know? Uh, yes, Hockley did admit he was, it was a mistake. And one thing that he did after admitting it was a mistake, everything else he did was right. He applied the re replay review right, spotted the ball correctly. The league frowns more uh, deeply upon misinterpretation or misapplication of the rules. Now, Oculi is going to get downgraded when he's graded. It could cost him a, a spot in the playoffs uh, or maybe won't referee in the Super Bowl or whatever goes on there. But the bottom line is when he ruled incomplete pass and blew that call, everything else was correct. That's where the, that's where the problem was. Well, that was not the only more uh, only controversial play in the game involving replay in the first half. The machine wasn't working. Replay machine was just so the Chargers could not challenge a fumble call on Chris Chambers recovered by Champ Bailey. What happened in that one? Well, that's actually, there was a malfunction with the uh, computer uh, sending down the video signal to the sidelines to Ed Hockley. He couldn't see the play, and they did what their, uh, the protocol says, wait two minutes to see if they can fix it. They couldn't get it fixed. Eventually, they did. did. Actually, when the league office looked at it today, the ball never hit the ground, so they're not sure how it would have been ruled once it had been. The bottom line is the manufacturers of the equipment is headed out to Denver to see what went wrong there. I'll also say I've spoken to members of the competition committee, Chris, uh, people you know, people you respect, and even though they'll Review the the play we're talking about in the hockey league. Uh, I don't get the sense it's necessarily going to be changed. Uh, the league actually sent a memo out to coaches and everybody last week saying they're they're, they're concerned about player safety and players taking cheap shots on these dead whistle calls. Uh, so I'm not expecting to change, even though it will certainly be discussed in the off season. Well, it'll be discussed in those March meetings. Always a nice place. But on the first one, I, I just wonder how it can happen. You know, machine doesn't work. I get it. Here's a hint. You have a spare tire in your car when you drive. But what about a spare tape deck? Something the league ought to look into. Thank you, Mort. See you a little bit later on in the show. Always trying to help, as you know. Back to the game, though. I mean, okay, here are the calls. And the score stays 39-38.
Mike Shanahan in September, mm -hmm. September, went for a two-point conversion to win the game. Nobody does that, Chris. Nobody. Kudos. Very short list. It, it is, and I think that we criticize coaches a lot. We do when, when they make bad decisions. I think this was a great decision. I don't think this decision was made yesterday. I think this decision was made this summer when he said Jay Cutler is my dude. All right, I finally have another John Elway. I'm gonna change the face of this franchise. I'm gonna show people when I get an opportunity. And I think as a player and as a coach, we all have the same amount of time to prepare every week. But NFL players and coaches are not preparing to stop a two-point conversion when you don't have timeout. So you're talking about an opportunity to take great advantage of, of, a, of a situation that guys don't cover that much. It takes guts. It takes confidence. It takes a coach saying, hey, I got a guy, and I can call a play. Yeah. I and mean, I got confidence in my ability to do that and my players. It's very genius on his part. I think he had all the variables in place. He knew exactly if they score, what we're going to do, we're going to go for two points. And last year, he would ice the kicker. Now I think he's going to start a trend where all of a sudden you're going to start to see coaches say, you know what, we, let's just win the game. Let's win the game. I think my team has a better chance of winning the game rather than going into overtime. Great feel for his football team, sensed that they had lost momentum, knew that they didn't have a timeout left. San Diego, Diego. will be surprised by the fact that we come out for a two-point conversion. But the key to everything they do right now is Jay Cutler. This is the offense that John Elway ran, the roll right, the throwing back. Those wide receivers, Eddie Royal, now Brandon Marshall, Antonio Cromartie, D'Angelo Hall, have eaten them alive the first couple of weeks of this season. He finds anybody who can run downhill, which that's usually who it is, anybody, they will be around at the end of the year. At least you guys forget. My game breaker yesterday was the guy who scored the last eight points. Eddie, Eddie Royal. Royal. <laughs> I like it, it Regal. No kidding. It was Regal. That guy does everything. Big Don't hurt knows. your back, Coach. Check it, check Don't it hurt yourself. Pick, you check. You know, and we see very few coaches do what Shanahan did. Uh, John Gruden did it in a December game and, and won a couple of years ago in 05. I think it was with the Bucks. But you know what I think? I think we said this last night on the blints, Tom. Um, look, I... If he was playing with house's money. That's correct. Well, well we shouldn't have the ball anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, let's go. I mean, let, what the heck? I mean, just ride it. Hit me. Hit me. Do it again. Double down. Let's go. We're splitting face cards. We don't Not care. Great call. Yeah, good, good call. Uh, good. It was unbelievable. Still ahead, though. We uh, quiet is generally not an adjective to describe Terrell Owens. Listen for yourself in tonight's soundtracks. And things are looking bright in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. Tom, on more on why the Packers quarterback is off to a flying start in reality and virtual. You are watching Monday Night Countdown, delivered by UPS. Join NASM next week as we reach the business end of the Major League Baseball regular season. The pennant race comes to a close as baseball's finest battle it out for a place in the postseason. Major League Baseball, only on NASM. For Wilson NFL and GST footballs and much more, visit NASN.com, your home for North American sports merchandise. Throws it down. Caught by Boston College. I don't believe it. Touchdown, Sun Devils. Woo! The snake does it again. Frost to the middle. Juggle. Diving touchdown, Nebraska. Davidson on the deflection. Touchdown, touchdown, Michael Jenkins. Holy Buckeye. XGames.com is the year-round online destination for action sports from around the world. We've got the latest vids, bios, photo galleries, and news 24-7, 365. Moto, BMX, skate, rally, surf, and the exclusive home of the X Games. If it happened in the world of action sports, it'll be on XGames.com. Bookmark it and log on early and often. Anytime, any place. XGames.com. February the 3rd, 2008, at stake the Vince Lombardi Trophy. The New England Patriots trying to rewrite history. The Giants an improbable run. This giant team has faith in their hearts. They think they can win this game. And Super Bowl 42 is underway. 
Second down and goal to go. Maroney right side. In. Touchdown. Lawrence Maroney. Second by the stand. Steps up. Sacked again. Loses the ball. This giant defense is really, really good. Play fake. Manning to throw to the end zone. Touchdown. Back to throw. Lobs one right for Moss. Touchdown. The Patriots have the lead with 242 to go. Manning under pressure. Avoids the rod. Still fights out of it. Now throws it deep downfield. Wide open Tyree who makes the catch. What a play. 39 seconds to go. Manning lobs it left. First is wide open. The New York Giants are the Super Bowl 42 champions. Whiteboard Breakdown, delivered by UPS. What can Brown do for you? Tom, don't back up there, by the way. Aaron Rodgers is a perfect 2-0 as a starter. That means he's worthy of our UPS Whiteboard Breakdown. Well, I, I think if we name the MVP of the league after two weeks of the season, this guy would huh. be the MVP. Aaron Rodgers is playing outstanding football for the Green Bay Packers, and he can do so many things. Just a naturally gifted passer. You take a look at him, gets back, protection breaks down a little bit. He's got great mobility, but watch him make this throw on the run. Doesn't plant his feet. Look at the accuracy of that throw. I mean, that, there, there's not six guys in the league who have the ability to do that. Here again, back, great play fake. Puts the ball out, allows the defense to see it, plant his feet. Greg Jennings downfield. Now, a lot of people say, oh, it's a little short. He put a little air under it. Knew he had him wide open. Gets a great game by Greg Jennings. And then, you know, this, this is, I know he learned this from Brett Favre, but now it's pure Aaron Rodgers. I'm looking right, looking right, knowing all the time that I'm coming back left to Donald Driver for a touchdown. This is after two football games. I would hate to see what it's going to be like after he gets about five, six, seven, eight starts. But right now, if you name the MVP of the league, who would be that's, playing that's, better that's than Aaron Rodgers? Who you're... needs Brett Favre anyway? I'm a Packer fan. You? <laughs> He's moving. Goodness. Lil it, Bill. It, and <laughs> what about the next touchdown he threw, which wasn't off a play fake, they flat-footed the one to yeah, did, Nelson. Didn't, didn't step yeah, into beautiful, it. Beautiful. Didn't step into it. Well, I mean, by the way, the Aaron Rodgers and the Packers – Host the Cowboys next Sunday at Lambeau. A little too early for an ice bowl, but not too early for an interesting game. Three guys always cool as the other side of the pillow. Back to Big D and Stu. Boom, I think I'm going to use that on the highlight tonight. Thanks for that, man. Oh, those Texas Stadium Monday night memories. Back in 1972, Craig Morton threw three touchdown passes in the first Monday night game here. September 78, Roger Stahlback threw four touchdown passes on Monday night here against the Baltimore Orioles. Heck, even Tony Romo, he had his coming out party here on a Monday night back in 2006. And in 04, Terrell Owens playing for the Eagles against the Cowboys had three touchdown catches here on a Monday night. Of course, that game was most memorable before it started when T.O. did the pregame tease with a desperate housewife and a towel, I believe. Basically, what I'm saying is the Cowboys' new facility has a lot to live up to. ESPN's.com, Matt Mosley took a tour of the new place with Cowboys owner Jerry Jones. I really thought Texas Stadium was uh, going to be where the Cowboys played as far as I could ever see. Do you look at this stadium as this is my family's legacy? So many people have contributed to me being able to build this stadium. This stadium needs to reflect media. It needs to re reflect the new technology in media, such as the center hung digital board, the, the glass curtain walls, the glass end zone retractable doors. When you're looking at this field, you've come here to watch the ball game, but periphery wise or direct wise, you're gonna have a vantage point that no one else in sports has had. 
Folks, this glass is not blue. This glass is as white as those glasses right there. But it's a it's a glistening, it's a it's an effect glass-wise that changes. And here's the panoramic view of the stadium. And this room that we're in right now is a huge club room. When they say what is the capacity of the stadium from a seating standpoint, you see 80,000, you see 90,000 or 100,000 is because we designed it so that we could be flexible with our seating. We're walking down through right now, Matt. We're going down through uh, where the players will come to the field and the fans will be um, cardened off so that they can't get in their way. But anyway, they'll be able to touch it. This building is going to be seen by more people. There won't be anybody that has to ask where is it and what is it. They'll know. Well, this building, Texas Stadium, has been seen by people for 38 seasons. Emmett, 11 career Monday night games here. We talked about that. Eight of them, you went over 100 yards rushing. But what do you think now? You know, this building has had some great teams and some great players, but now everybody keeps talking about, yeah, but they haven't won a playoff game since 96. What does it make you feel? Well, it makes me feel like this team has to learn from its mistakes from last year. And last year, they, they, they had a number of penalties, and it started last week also. They had 11 in the Cleveland Browns game. So in order for this team to move in the area or the direction that they need to go in, one, they got to limit those mistakes then the second thing that they need to do they need to learn how to deal with success they had they won 13 straight games last year and therefore they got the big head they got very big headed and they couldn't finish the deal therefore when they got in the playoff they got steamrolled by the Giants and I don't quite think they understood how important that first round of the playoff what really was so they have to learn from their mistakes he's fired up ain't he he, he fired he up. He Go said to the locker room and tell him. Hey, let me go tell him. 96. He said, hey, 96 is a long time for a team that's won a lot of football games recently. How shocking is that, the fact that the Cowboys, who have played very good football, pro football quarterback the last couple years, not a, not a playoff win. We got one more Monday night memory we got to mention. September 94, right here, Cowboys-Lions. Emmitt had 143 yards rushing. Barry Sanders, 194. Barry got you that night. Yes, he did. But you got him on the all-time list. You're number one all-time. Barry Sanders, number three. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yes. Still to come here on Monday Night Countdown, two Super Bowl winning quarterbacks go deep as they tackle this week's QB conundrums. Did play calling doom the Jets yesterday? And there is no quarterback conundrum in Philly. Donovan, finally healthy. But will T.O. ever stop talking about him? Number 81's latest comments coming up. NASN is giving you the chance to choose which live game you want to see with an MLB viewer's choice. See the Twins face off against the Rays in Tampa Bay. The White Sox battle the Yankees in New York. Or catch the Phillies fight for a win against the Braves in Atlanta. Choose which game you want to see and visit NASN.com now to cast your vote. A Major League Baseball viewer's choice. Watch the winning game live this Thursday only on NASN. There are 380,000 NCAA student athletes. And most of us will go and pro. And most of us will go pro in something, something other, than, other sport. than sports. In something other than sports. Go to ncaastudent.org to find out how.
pardon the interruption, but I'm Mike Will Bon. Tony, how would you describe us to our overseas viewers? I'm Tony Kornheiser, and we're sort of like America's Bex and Posh. I'm Bex. Bex has a comb over? <laughs> ESPN's Pardon the Interruption. Join Tony and Mike for all the latest opinions and headlines weeknights only on NASN. people attended this year's Fiestas Patreus Festival at Texas Stadium last Sunday, a Mexican cultural and traditional celebration that featured live musical performances. Well, from a cultural celebration to some quarterback conundrums and our own version of Los Lobos, our two Super Bowl winning quarterbacks, Steve Young and Trent Dilfer, tackle some quarterback issues around the league. Fellas? Boomer, Los Lobos, I'm not sure where you're going with that one. <laughs> hey, Trent, last day in a statement ball game in the NAFC East, you had the Jets and the Patriots. Brett Favre has joined the football team. They're down 6 nothing. They drive 77 yards, 54 of those yards. They're down 6 nothing by a pass from Favre to Lavernius Coles. They're first and three at the three, first and goal. They run the ball three times. What do you think about that play calling in particular and then how they use Brett Favre throughout the day? We have Brett Favre. Let's not forget, this guy's throwing more touchdown passes in the area of the field that you're talking about inside the five than anybody in the history of the National Football League. He's creative. He turns every play into an adventure. This is where he's at his best. To put the handcuffs on in this situation, to me, is ridiculous. Well, you know what, Brent? I, I, uh, Trent, I also believe that this was a statement game for Brett Favre, and I think that Eric Mangini is a very conservative coach. He wants to win 17-14, but you've just signed the Hall of Famer. You've made a biggest move of the offseason by anyone else in the whole league. This is the statement game to take over the AFC East. I say give Brett Favre the ball 40 times and just see what goes on. All Jet fans are wondering if this is just the same old thing, and that's what you played into yesterday by being conservative. Okay, let's move on to Tavares Jackson and Minnesota. 2-0-2 and I think a lot of the reason is his inability to put the ball in the end zone. What do you see, Trent? No doubt about it. I heard you talk about Aaron Rodgers last week, and we'll see what Aaron Rodgers is once he crosses the 30. Well, interesting, Traveris Jackson's quarterback rating in the red zone is 30. His, his third down quarterback rating is in the low 60s. We judge quarterbacks, if you judge them appropriately, by how many games they win and how they play in critical situations. And right now, Traveris Jackson and the Minnesota Vikings are playing their worst when it matters the most. And you know what, down inside the red zone, I've always said, Trent, you agree with this, I'm sure, that's where the NFL quarterback truly becomes supreme in his craft. I believe that you can do your job every time and still kick field goals. And Tavares Jackson seems to be robot-like down there trying to do his job, and he needs to be more creative and get that ball in the end zone, or the Vikings will suffer throughout the year. I Stu, agree. I, I, that is a conundrum. All right, Trent, go ahead. Well, I was getting ready to say, I remember a conversation we had in Hawaii one offseason where you told me I'll never be the player that I can be until I have an offensive coach and a system that allows my creativity to come out. And that's exactly what you're saying about Traveris Jackson, a much more talented player than I was, but give him a chance. We don't know who he is because they're not giving him a chance to utilize the talent that we, at times, we see come out. He's roped up, Stu, you hear that? He's corralled. <laughs> Let the man free. <laughs> Terrell Owens, you know, if they have a, an award for best looking player in his pregame tights in the league, that would be T.O. One of T.O.'s former teammates is described like this. He's going to maul you, beat you up, and feel pretty good about it. Who's that a description of, a felon? No, it's how Eagles coach Andy Reid describes his 6'7", 330-pound offensive lineman John Runyon, which is actually kind of nice when compared to how fellow Eagle offensive lineman Trey Thomas describes Runyon. He says he likes to start fights with his teammates. Is there anybody who thinks that Runyon is just a big old teddy bear? Yeah, his wife Loretta. But the question is, does Loretta no Runyon better than Runyon's teammate Trey Thomas. We teamed up with ESPN the magazine and found out in For Love or the Game. This is John Runyon of the Philadelphia Eagles and you're watching ESPN the magazine's For Love or the Game. Let's see who knows me better. My wife of 10 years, Loretta. I think I know him better than Trey. There's no way he's going to take me down. He's going down. My teammate of nine, Trey. Smooth, smooth. John's first concert was Garth Brooks. Wow. 
I would say Madonna. <laughs> like a virgin tour. <laughs> First concert I ever went to. Probably in college when I actually went to see the Eagles. Uh. John's favorite food, steak man. I say ribs. I pretty much eat anything, but you can't turn down a good steak. It's nice and tasty. <laughs> Who wears pants in the family? Well, look who has them on now. We think that we wear the pants, but um, it's really the women make all the decisions. Who wears the pants in my family? Well, I only wear shorts, so uh, she wears the rest of the leg. <laughs> Check. John's major in college was some kinesiology. I have no idea. Culinary arts. <laughs> My major in college was kinesiology. Most people can't even say it. John and I met in Houston when he was with the Oilers, and it was Sam's boat. My kids think it's a real boat, but it's a bar. Loretta used to be a cop, huh? Hey, Loretta and John met. She probably pulled him over. I met my wife kind of through mutual friends hanging out at the same bar, Sam's Boat in Houston, Texas. <laughs> See, I knew I, was, I knew I was gonna take him down. Trey doesn't know my husband like I know him. I faked a couple of answers to this so that you can win. Okay. <laughs> Trey, give it up. Hey, speaking of ESPN The Magazine, Jeremy Shockey on the cover of the latest issue of ESPN The Mag on newsstands now. What's it like to start your career from scratch in a new city? Now let's check in with Michelle Tafoya with the Teams with 20 report on the Eagles. Michelle? Well, Stuart, the Eagles for the second week in a row are without their starting wide receivers, Reggie Brown and Kevin Curtis, because of injury concerns. But the backups have filled in more than capably so far. Last week, Deshaun Jackson, the rookie, Hank Baskett, and Greg Lewis each had 100 100-yard receiving days, but a lot of that success can also be attributed to Donovan McNabb's return to form. Uh, last year, McNabb was coming off reconstructive knee surgery. He had to rely much more on his upper body and arm to get into the throw, but now he says with his legs back under him, he can bring, quote, everything into the throw, Boomer. All right, Michelle, that's for sure. The, uh, it, he looks good throwing it, and it did take a year and a half, two years. We talked about mm -hmm. it today. Mm -hmm. Last year, three of the four teams uh, from this division made the playoffs, and the last place team, Philadelphia, was at 500. This year, the division is a combined 5-1. and one. So of all these teams, who impresses you the most, Tom? Well, I, I think the New York football giants, and until somebody dethrones them, I think they're the best team not only in football, but certainly the best team in this. Brandon Jacobs, he's the hammer. Uh, you've got Ward and Bradshaw as the changeup. Eli Manning, Chris always said, he is a made man. You mentioned that he threw a ball left-handed. Mm -hmm. When you do that, you're feeling pretty comfortable. And yeah. the defense understands, stop the run and then rush the passer. It doesn't matter. OC, stray hand missing, we're still going to be great at it. Yeah. I think they're the best team in this division. I still think they're the best team in football. And Coach must love it because Coach Coughlin's overlooked with his football team. And this is definitely the best division. If you look at the quarterback situation, Jason Campbell, playoff team there in Washington, we have two Super Bowl quarterbacks within the division. People, McNabb took his team. Eli, we mentioned that, that he's a made man. This is the best division key in all of football. Top it, it is the best division. And, and, you know, I like the Dallas Cowboys, but they scare me a lot in terms of, at the end of the day, will they get it done? Uh, it, you, they're going to win a lot of regular season games as we continue to talk about, we continue to discuss. Most talented. Most talented. <clears throat> but when you hit them in the mouth, they fold their tent. You're right. And, yeah. and that's a problem. Is it, th it, it, is, it is the best. But is it the toughest? That's what you're asking. Yeah. Right. It's going to fun. you got to prove it sometime. But I tell you what, I like what I see. The running backs in this division are pretty tough. The offensive lines are pretty solid. Now, somebody's got to step up tonight and make the other guy's eyes water. Mm. And that means punch mm. them in the nose. Mm. Mm. They, both, they all, well, the three teams that we talk about, other than Washington, right now push the envelope offensively, right? We all agree yes. with that. Yes. Yes. I think Washington, with West Coast offense coming in, after Thanksgiving, I know they don't want to wait that long, they'll be a better offensive team than you're seeing right now. And I think all four push the envelope or can push the envelope defensively. The Giants speak for itself. Philly, you're going to see with the way they blitz it. Dallas with the big guys. And remember how the Skins rallied in December mm -hmm. after the tragedy mm -hmm. with John So we know that they, that they can do that. Boom, who, who's the toughest team in this division? Toughest? Toughest, toughest. What do you guys think? 
I would the I Giants? would say it's the Giants, but Giants? You know, the Cowboys, Philadelphia tell me a lot tonight. Dallas the biggest, right? Yeah. Dallas is the biggest. From, from yeah. one end to the right side to the left side, they're the biggest. But I think there's something with the Giants about the way their style of play, Tom, Toughness. and the way. With that football team right now, they're going to get after you. You know, like that bulldog gets a hold of you. He don't want to let go. And that's what I like about the I, I love Philadelphia. Jim Johnson does a great job with his defense, mm -hmm. and he'll have something ready for tonight. But the Giants, until somebody beats them. And they don't have a lot of pro bowlers. You know, they're secondary suspect. You, you, you have know. to give credit to someone who's done something. There you go. There I mean, you go. I mean you, there you go. someone who's accomplished. Forget about what your aspirations and dreams are, but someone who's done. Dick, he's won a Super Bowl. I, I respect that. Keyshawn's won a Super Bowl. I, I respect that. You have to respect the man that holds the trophy. You know what? Andy Reid is happiest in Philadelphia's case. Yes, he's happy when they, they throw the ball and it goes well, and Brian Westbrook's running all over the place and McNabb is. He's happiest when the offensive and defensive lines are still. Absolutely. That's what he's happy. He'll, right. he'll tell you that. Right. He's happiest, so they're going to try to do that. It, is it, this is fun to watch. Still ahead. This is T.O.'s third season in Dallas, but he's still talking about Donovan McNabb. Latest comments ahead. And coming up on Monday Night Countdown, I'm going to tell you why these guys are a key to a Dallas win tonight against the Philadelphia Eagles. out there right now. They're showing blitz. I think players underestimate the closing speed of Erlacher. And then Erlacher cleans him up. And down he goes. He's hit by Erlacher on the blitz. And down he goes. And it's intercepted by Erlacher. That's a heck of a play by Erlacher. We ignite the whole stadium. That's a great individual effort by Erlacher. These guys look fantastic. I'm so proud. Join the Reebok Hockey Revolution. Visit NASN.com, your home for North American sports merchandise. For live commentary, news and stats, scrum.com. Instant rugby anywhere. Jervis, he's got it. Touchdown, Browns. Ganderson over the middle. Winslow got it. Touchdown, Kellen Winslow. It's Lewis. He's in. Touchdown. He's looking for Edwards up in the air. He's got it. Touchdown, Braylon Edwards. So, EJ, we've designed you a signature shoe worthy of a three-time All-American with mad smarts and sick leadership skills. ta -da. There are over 380,000 NCAA student-athletes. Yeah, you got your GPA in Boss, right? There. I love it. <laughs> and just about all of them will be going pro in something other than sports. Can I get it in a loafer for Casual Fridays? Yes. Yes. The NFL enters week three on NASN with a live doubleheader. First up, the Dolphins take a trip to New England in the NFC East. Then it's the Colts and the Jaguars doing battle in the AFC. Coverage starts with ESPN Sunday NFL Countdown. Live NFL only on NASN. GMC Sierra Defensive Player of the Week. Brought to you by the GMC Sierra. Watch SportsCenter after the game for the GMC Sierra Post Game and Defensive Player of the Week nominees. It's the best defense from Week 2. The GMC Sierra Defensive Players of the Week nominees are Justin Tuck, just in time. Two sacks and a 41 yard pick return as the G Men battered the Rams 41 13. 
Now is one of Tommy's favorite players, the Niners, Patrick Willis. Eight tackles and an 86-yard interception return that tied the game as the Niners upset the Seahawks in OT on the road. How about Charles Woods still strong? Two interceptions, one for a touchdown against the Lions as the Green Bay won 48 to 25. That was cool. So new to Sports Center after game to see all the GMC Sierra Defensive Player of the Week nominees. And this is not one of them, Chris Mortensen. But more rumors surfaced that Raiders coach Lane Kiffin could be fired. Now they wanted Kansas City. What's the update here? Yeah, there are actually more than rumors. There have been reports, and uh, that's been the word. Uh, you know, the Raiders won in Kansas City on Sunday uh, after the uh, embarrassing loss to the Denver Broncos. Uh, nobody had really heard uh, from Al Davis in the Oakland building today. Still waiting to hear. He could fire a lane on Tuesday. He uh, could wait until the bye week. They play at Buffalo next week. Then they play against the San Diego Chargers. Then they have a bye. He could wait until then. Or he can simply let them uh, sit and wonder. That, that wouldn't be, you know, when I've spoke, uh, spoken with some of the former Raider coaches, even some former Raider players, they say they see the science coming. This is going to happen at some point. You just don't know when. They're one on one. Well, actually, when you think about last year, Chris, they were very competitive yes. in, in almost all of their games, two or three, with the exception of two or three games. They improved. Uh, let's move on. Her, earlier we heard Stephen Trent in our conundrum spell that. <laughs> uh, they talked about Tavares Jackson. How concerned are the Vikings here with their young quarterback? Because I know Brad Childress really been high on him, but but they're 0-2. And yeah, remember, when Brad Childress came from Philadelphia, when he drafted Tavares Jackson, he really thought this guy has a chance to be the next Donovan McNabb. And last December, he thought Jackson was on track. And then all of a sudden, despite a good preseason, he has slipped. And, and Sunday against Indianapolis, I, I think 90% of his passes were thrown to the right side, which suggests he's not being allowed to read the full field. They want consistency from him. Listen, when Chad Pennington was released uh, by the New York Jets, his agent called the Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings says, we're not interested. There's Brian Greasy, who is keeping the job for another week, John Gruden said today. The there's Jeff Garcia out there. Do they make a move? We haven't heard anything there yet, but I do know there's some concern because he got an owner in Ziggy Wolf who spent a lot of money this offseason, and he expects results, and he certainly expects them from Tavares Jackson. All right, well, Jackson tweaked a little bit in the preseason. We'll keep, uh, we'll keep our eyes on the Vikings, who don't want to 0-2 start with much expected of them. Thank you, Mort. See you later in the show. The Cowboys, Terrell Owens. Well, other than maybe the Liberty Bell, no split in Philadelphia has drawn as much attention as Owens and the Eagles. 2006, the two parted ways after his comments rang the wrong way. On or off the field, the sounds have rarely been monotone. T.O., the subject of this week's soundtracks. Yeah! It's T.O. time, baby. It's yo time, baby. To the house, baby. I appreciate y'all tuning in. Go to the T.O. show right now. All I want to know if you got your popcorn ready. Do you got your popcorn ready? Hey, I just look like this. Don't get your popcorn ready. I look good. Dress sweet. Ah! Ah! Calm down, T. Calm down, T. Who can make a play? I can. Who can make a play? I can. That guy playing me one-on-one. -on -one. That's disrespectful. He gonna be in trouble all day. It's me. It's me. I told you. They hate to love me. Cause I love me some me. I love me some me. I can't stand myself. Just know that I got another gear. Yeah, I know you do. He commit, I'm gone. Touchdown! As close to being unstoppable as any receiver I've seen. This will be fun. Oh, he flaps his wings like a big eagle bird in the end zone. Louder! Louder! They can hate me all y'all want to, but you can't stop Well, the numbers don't lie. Tia, one of the greatest wide receivers ever to play the game, far as numbers go. Eighth all-time in receptions, ninth all-time in yards, tied for second with our man Chris right here. With 130 TDs, 67 behind the incomparable Jerry Rice. Here's Tom with a look at a different facet to the Cowboys' offense. Well, in order for those receivers to do their job, the offensive line has to do their job. You watch the protection here for Tony Romo. This is the biggest offensive line in football. Averages 327 pounds per man. Great job of blocking and picking up the blitz by the back. Tony Romo, 
to Jason Witten. It all works. Through our EA Sports Virtual Playbook, we're going to talk about a part of the game that I love, and that's interior line play. And there's no offensive line more physical, more intimidating than that of the Dallas Cowboys. They weigh 327 pounds per man. That's the average. They don't like the zone block. They like to man block, get a hat on a hat. That's the fullback included. Once that happens, they have a runner in Marion Barber who fits their style of play Perfectly. Once he takes off, what you know is, is he's either going to make the first guy miss or he's going to run through him for an added four or five yards. But again, everything they do is about intimidation and wearing you down. The Philadelphia Eagles, a lot smaller defensive unit. They're going to use a lot of run blitzes to try to stop this team. But watch, late third quarter, early fourth quarter. If they get worn down, they've got no shot to win this game. Tom, pick him up. He needed a hand. <laughs> We're not done with T.O. yet. Hear what Owen said about his former teammate Donovan McNabb earlier in the week. And he's one of the most versatile players in the game. Jaws has more on what makes Brian Westbrook such an impressive force on offense. We'll be back. You are watching Monday Night Countdown, delivered by UPS. With 16 interceptions over the last two seasons, former New England Patriot Asante Samuel is a sound addition to the Philadelphia Eagles. Asante Samuel's got it! Samuel was a two-time world champion with the Patriots and has been a starter since his rookie season of 2003. He should shore up an already solid Eagles secondary, adding big playability. Picked off left side, down the sideline, Asante Samuel going to take it all the way! Touchdown! Tony Stewart. Boyer's got it made. Casey K. Denny Hamlin. Ooh, Harvick. That 83 car. Clint Boyer's going to take it to the bank. <laughs> Put it, Biffle, save it. The grandfather clock chimes for Denny Hamlin. Casey King wins at Pocono. Just because you're thousands of miles from the nearest big league stadium doesn't mean you can't be a big league fan. Majestic Athletic. The official uniform supplier for all 30 Major League Baseball teams. Available now all over Europe at NASN.com. NASN, the number one source for all your NFL coverage this season. We kick off each week with Sunday NFL Countdown, followed by up to three live games, including the top matchups from across the league. Mondays continue with two first-run games followed by NFL Primetime and Monday Night Countdown with all the top stories from Sunday and all the buzz leading into the live game on Monday Night Football. Don't miss all the latest news, analysis, and features weekdays with NFL Total Access. Plus bonus coverage with NFL Game Day, Top 10, and Who Is. And come playoff time, we've got you covered with even more live games as the AFC and the NFC crown their champions with the Wild Card, Divisional, and Conference Championships. And the greatest game of them all, Super Bowl 43, live from Tampa, Florida. Plus your annual trip to the Pro Bowl in Hawaii. The NFL this season on NASN. were hot. Donovan McNabb out with the Eagles and of course as they would in Philly with the Cowboys some boo birds out at Texas Stadium. He says hi how are you? 
Donovan McNabb. Let me tell you, his head is my, it's in a great place. And he came out looking just that way, you know, opening week win over the St. Louis Rams. Well, time flies when you're nestled in the bird's nest. Hard to believe this is Donovan McNabb's 10th season with the Eagles. And with apologies to our man Jaws, McNabb has established himself as the greatest quarterback in franchise history. The evidence, five NFC East titles, four NFC title games, one Super Bowl appearance. It hasn't always been a smooth ride between injuries and playing under the Philly microscope. He's seen his share of stormy weather. Here is Donovan McNabb unmasked. It starts with one drop. Before you realize it, the storm is upon you. Blindsided, no protection, vulnerable. It rages all around you. You only have two choices, run for cover or stand tall. I have weathered the storm, the booze, the injuries, the teammates. It's about survival. It's about overcoming. No matter how dark the clouds that surround me, I will shine through. Had a lot of challenges, a lot of ups and downs, injuries, tough losses, Super Bowl loss. Adversity has changed me as a player because it makes you stronger mentally. It prepares you for a lot of things that you may not see. And when things happen, you're already prepared. You're stronger. You understand exactly what you need to do in order to get yourself back to a high level. And when you get to that high level, you don't surprise yourself. You expect it. Welcome to NFL Moment. Hear my name called as the second pick of the 99 draft. With the uh, second pick, the Philadelphia Eagles select Donovan McNabb, quarterback, Syracuse University. The fans are irate over the fact that they didn't take Ricky Williams. Most painful moment in my career, losing the Super Bowl. You work so hard all throughout the season, put yourself in a great position to win, and you don't get it done. I want my legacy to be a guy with great work ethic. Whenever he touches the ball, you see nothing but excitement. Donovan McNabb, is he a weapon or what? And the most important thing, I want people to say, you know what? Donovan McNabb was a winner. I don't believe in pressure. I believe pressure busts pipes. Pressure sometimes reveal a man. But until you understand what pressure really is, it'll never affect you. This is my public service announcement. For all of you that are watching, buckle your seatbelt, because number five is here to stay. What is a game in Dallas without a primetime soap opera? Here's the T.O. Donovan timeline. Happy first act. 1,200 yards, 14 TDs back in 2004. Made the Super Bowl that season. T.O. caught nine for 122 in the game. The Eagles lost by three to the Pats. Of course, 24 to 21. And T.O. coming back from the injury was marvelous. McNabb had the Eagles in a position to maybe win it, but not enough at the end as the Patriots won another three-point Super Bowl. 2005, after making disparaging comments about McNabb, T.O. was suspended, deactivated, the Eagles finally cut ties with him March 2006. Of course, four days after that, Cowboys signed him to a three-year, $25 million deal. Even now, T.O. is still talking about Donovan. I came there with a lot of expectations. The fans wanted me there. Ultimately, I landed in Philly. You got 60-odd thousand people, however many the link holds. You got the whole stadium in there. T.O., 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 T.O. He was supposed to be the guy. You know, I think there's a lot of things that Donovan has, you know, been confronted with, you know, since, uh, you know, being in Philly, being drafted there. They didn't want him there. Then he came there and he proved that he could play. So I think, you know, overall those years, he's had, he's had a chip on his shoulder. And for them to kind of really kind of shift the love, you know, so to speak, to, to me, and it was almost like I was the man in the city. You know, I hear people all the time like, bro, if you would have just acted right, if you would have stayed, you could have done anything in Philly, anything you wanted. But it wasn't about that. I wasn't trying to come in there and steal anybody's limelight. I was happy at the fact that I could share it. Hey, still at it. Boom, boomer, your boomer, 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 boomer. <laughs> I don't look for that. Well, where's the stadium, by the way? How do you react to all this, Key? I, I, I think you... 
<laughs> I mean, look, I, I, I say this in, in respect All to Ron right. Warren. He's a great football player, and he's going to probably go to the Hall of Fame at some point in time, but you don't see Donovan McNabb talking about Terrell Owens. Mm -hmm. Donovan Gnab is a franchise quarterback, and this is for the fans to know that's watching this show. He's a franchise quarterback. He's been to a number of Pro Bowls. Receivers are a dime a dozen, fellas. Chris, you know that. Yes, sir. They can plug us in, take us out all day long and replace us. You cannot do that with a franchise quarterback. You can't replace Peyton Manning, Donovan McNabb, Tom Brady, uh, Brett Favre, any of those guys. And I don't think T.O. understands it. I think he really wants to be a franchise player. And wide receivers, they're not. And as far as being jealous, I mean, to me watching that, looks like he's jealous of McNabb's success. In all respect to everyone here, coach, one as a player and, and as a coach. Keyshawn, one as a player. Tom, you lost two. I lost two NFC championships. I, I, I'm here today as a person that I have a regret. I didn't win a Super Bowl. And if you could ask me one question, if I was 13 years in the league like T.O., that question would be, as your teammate, what must you do? What, what, what do you want me to do as a teammate? Forget about all this other mess. All, that's, that's all it is, is mess. What do I need to do to help us get there? All right, because when you get there, ask Troy Brown. I give Troy Brown six, seven, eight hundred catches to have his three Super Bowls, 130 touchdowns. All oh, that is garbage. It's about winning. He should be thinking about winning. And that's the only thing. Well, it, you certainly don't need to be concerning yourself with something that happened three years ago with Donovan McNabb or something that happened 10 years ago with Jeff Garcia. Look, if I'm an eagle, I'm saying all the right things in front of the camera. You're going to hear exactly the things that they say. But privately in that locker room. <laughs> when they buckle this, it up. And like this is real. This is Asante Samuel. I'm going over to Brian Dawkins, and I'm saying, let's shut this up. Let's end this. Because, you know, he's not, the, he's not the bravest receiver to ever play in the NFL. It's just, a, just well, a, you know, something like, I noticed while I watch. You got you, Everybody agrees he's a great receiver. I just think, oh, I don't think he's no, great. No, I think he's a lousy <laughs> teammate. Oh. I'm very honest with that. And, and, and it's what Chris said is right there. The game of football is about winning. You're not going to remember the awards. You're going to remember the Super Bowls. That's what you're going to remember. The other stuff doesn't matter. I caught a ball. I made a touchdown. So what? I acted like a clown on the field. This kid never started the sentence. Didn't start with the word I. It's crazy. <laughs> every, every, single time, every time I watch him, though, seriously, I, I start to believe that he would rather be MVP on a losing Super Bowl team, and that's sad to say, than just catch two balls and win a Super Bowl. That's what I believe. I just believe. Every time I watch him, it just seems that like he's and, not and he was And he was making progress. Why go backwards? Why? I mean, he seems like he's trying it, but, but why even look backwards and it's boomer, I'm, I'm boomer, boomer, oh, boomer, stop. boomer. 65,000. 65,000, yell your name, boom. Well, I tell you what. You know what is a name that T.O. also keeps? Not so much. Every now and then, still Jeff Garcia. I said it, yeah. Jeff what is that, Garcia? 10 years? 10 years. He'd be buried, no, he buried a him decade, in, uh, a, a decade Kansas ago. Hey, listen, he'll get, to, he'll get Romo before it's over. He'll have him under I the hope not. Romo's such a nice guy. He's a great I guy. Hope not. I hope not. 130. You have caught 130. T.O.'s caught 130. T's. You can have them all. Give me a, give me a ring. You can have three, four fingers. Or you can give me a ring. Tom, 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 Tom. Hey, doing coverage. some singing tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it's good that we get bonus coverage here tonight uh, on the Monday uh, countdown. Well, no Eagles head coach has more wins against the Cowboys than Andy Reid. How good is Reid's record against Dallas? In 20 years from 1968 to 1988, the Eagles won a total of Ten regular season games against the Cowboys. In nine years with the Eagles, Andy's beaten his arch rivals 13 times, three of the last four. With more on tonight's game, let's head back down to Texas Stadium and the guys in the booth. Mike? Well, hi, Chris. Hi, folks. Uh, great to be here in Dallas for a Monday night or in any NFC East game. Uh, you, you know it for years. You're watching an NFC East game. There's some sizzle to it. And, and we were talking to Andy Reid last the, ch the challenge, really the task at hand for the Philadelphia Eagles, and when it's Cowboy Week, there's a little bit of an extra special sense to it. It's a big deal. He even said that the people in Philadelphia would be so happy if he beat Dallas that he wouldn't have to win any other games. <laughs> and we knew he was kidding about that. But it, what is interesting about it is the Eagles in their first game crushed St. Louis. Right. They were up at one point, 38-0. And Andy Reid said, that's not the game I want. 
His phrase was, I don't like it when a team falls on the pavement. He said the games he cherishes were the knockdown drag out close games in this division. Well, it's good to cherish them when you have some chess pieces that are really special. And in their running back, Brian Westbrook, the Eagles have one of the most unique pieces in the entire NFL. Well, Mike, really, when you look at this Eagles offense, it does run through Brian Westbrook. To me, he's the most versatile running back in the National Football League. Not only because he could run the football, but what he can do as a wide receiver. Andy Reid puts him in a position where he gets up against a linebacker or a safety and makes plays. Let me show you exactly what I mean here. When you get Brian Westbrook lined up in the slot, this is against the Redskins. You see the empty formation from the Eagles. It's man-to-man -man across the board. So now you have Westbrook matched up against London Fletcher. That's exactly the matchup Andy Reid wanted. You'll see Westbrook just beat London Fletcher with a little rope move right there. Donovan McNabb's in a real nice cradle. Let's spin this around. You can see the nice firm pocket. Donovan comfortable. Now he waits for Westbrook to come into his vision. And here's the beauty of Brian Westbrook. It's a short pass and a long run. Brian Westbrook is one of the most explosive players in the National Football League. You will see 20 to 25 touches out of him tonight, either as a running back or wide receiver. Not bad for a guy who was a third-round pick. And then the next year, a third-round pick ended up with the Cowboys, Jason Witten. And he has a similar type impact to what Westbrook does to the opposing defense. A absolutely right, Mike. You know, when, when you look at Witten, he's a, he's a similar guy for the Cowboys. Their offense runs through him. Everyone talks about their big playmakers. But one thing Witten can do, he can block. And I think that's paramount with in this Dallas Cowboy offense. The other thing, when you think of your tight end, you think of a possession receiver. Uh-uh-uh. Witten is a guy that can go downfield and give you the explosive play, particularly the seam pass, one of his favorites. The difference also between Philadelphia and Dallas is a sort of soap opera aspect. We talked to Witten the other day about this. I remember asking him, everything that goes on around here, if you were a 1,000 miles away and you didn't play, what would you think of the Cowboys with all that talent and all that stuff? And he said, I'd look at them as the guys who had a lot of talent, but I don't think they would get it together. And that's the challenge for that team. Yeah, that missing playoff win that everybody keeps talking about. You have till December to talk about it. Tonight, it's the Eagles. And boom, we'll see you at the bottom of the hour for kickoff. All right, guys, this should be a lot of fun. Still ahead, Dallas has been Tony Romo's place to shine. How much pressure is on him to deliver playoff wins this season? Cowboys and Eagles on Monday night. We'll be back. Big game on Monday night. Best talking American sports we got riders Tony right there. Ryan. 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 We got Rex Ryan. Ryan. Don't miss them get muted every day on Around the Horn weekdays on NASN, your source for North American sports. Horsey! There are 380,000 NCAA student athletes, and most of us, and most of will, us go will go pro in something, something other than, other than, sports. than sports. In something other than sports. To learn more, go to NCAA.org. That is the way to stomp your way into the playoffs. What do I control? I don't control the bumps and the bruises, the crowd, or who covers me. I don't control the bounces, the shootout order. For that matter, what happens outside the rink? There are a lot of things in life I don't control. But then again, there are some things that I do.
hosted an NFL Play 60 Youth Football Festival at the Cowboys Complex to kick off the celebration of 2008 Hispanic Heritage Month. The festival had four NFL flag football clinics as well as an exhibition game between the Mexican NFL Tochito National Flag Football Champions. Hey, two straight playoff losses. That's what Tony Romo has had to deal with. Yeah, he's taken them there two straight years, but also two straight losses. In 2006, the snap that cost Dallas a chance to advance. And then last year, Romo just struggled against the Giants, throwing a late interception to seal New York's win. The top seed in the NFC was eliminated. Guys, we've seen Tony Romo's coolness under pressure. We've seen him handle the pressure of dating a celebrity, Jessica Simpson. We've also seen him have a lot of success in the regular season. What does he need to do to make that success go further? That's one thing everybody always criticizes him about. First of all, Tony Romo is a great kid, very mature. I love the way he's handled the T.O. situation. But I think in order for him to go to the next level, this offensive unit needs a leader. And he should be the guy to step up and be that leader, that vocal leader. That guy on the sideline that's walking down, talking to the offensive lineman, but they're not making the correct blocks or making a bunch of mistakes. He should be the guy to step up and say, hey, guys, we're not doing it the Cowboy way. We need to be better than this. We need to be much more mature, much more professional to make this thing work for all of us. You know, and I agree. I think that's not his personality so far. It's not his personality. It's okay. You know, Brett Favre, everyone's going to compare Tony to Brett Favre. In a lot of ways, it, it is a good comparison. Brett had to grow into that role, and Tony will grow into that role. You can't ask for more from a kid that's come from where he did the last couple of years and play as well as he has. So he is ahead, well ahead of schedule by anyone's uh, He will grow into that role. In the meantime, the Cowboys do not have that guy or that group of guys like the Patriots do, like the Colts do, that police the locker room, that self-police. We talk about more authority in the locker room that grab you by the throat we're going to get this done that's what the cowboys do not have that's why should, i mentioned them should, as should, 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 should so tony don't romo put that on tony. That. hold on no do not put that hold on tony romo hold yet on, it is not on. his personality why? He's the quarterback. it's not his personality Steve, why Steve. force something is it's not, not possible. It, okay check this out defensively you have your leaders offensively you have your leaders as an offensive leader and a guy that i pay 67 million dollars to you're going to step up and be the man that we expect you to be because number one we are relying on you and others need to get up and do that job too. with that. But it has to be it has to be a natural growth process for Tony. They don't have time. I, they don't have time. They don't, but they, they have, have time. They need to get the guys in the locker room that cannot fade in January and carry Tony with them. It all starts though. It's not necessarily all his fault. Now I agree. I agree with that. It's not all his fault. Some of it has to come on the head coach's shoulder. Now, at the end of the day, when I look at this whole situation with the now, Dallas now Cowboys. You're, now you're preaching. Go now, ahead, give it to me. Okay, okay. <laughs> now, now okay. you're going. Okay. <laughs> Tell you what, though, if the Cowboys do go far in the playoffs, they might want to thank Michael Jordan. Romo was paired with Jordan at a golf tournament. He says Jordan told him, use the perception that you can't win the big one. Use it as a tool, but don't let it make it a part of you. Now, being a part of the Cowboys, that's Susie Calvo with our Teams at 20 report. Susie? Well, Stuart, Tony Romo, Terrell Owens, they always grab the headlines for Dallas. But tonight, the Dallas defense also has a lot to prove. They want to show that last week against Cleveland wasn't a fluke. Andy Reid says they are big, strong, and fast at every oh, position, and that the Eagles need to bring their intensity back. And tonight, the Cowboys get another weapon back. Pro Bowl cornerback Terrence Newman, who missed last week with a groin injury. Pac-Man Jones got the start. He will get the start again tonight, but expect Newman, who's been out here running and cutting, to get eased into action on third down and nickel situations. Now for a final report on the Eagles, here's Michelle Tafoya. Well, Susie, Tara Lowens and Donovan McNabb are inexorably linked, so their relationship was a hot topic again this week. And in one of his comments, Tara Lowens said he thought that Donovan McNabb was a little jealous of his popularity in Philadelphia. Well, McNabb told us yesterday, I didn't care about that. I heard my name yelled by the fans, too. And then he went on to say, I hate that every time we play Dallas, this stuff starts to brew. We'll be 40 or 50 years old, and they'll still be asking us about this. Then he went on to say, Stuart, that I'm enjoying my position. T.O.'s enjoying his, so let it go. All right, we'll listen to you, Donovan, at least until the next game. Hey, no shortage of marquee players on the field right now. When we come back, it is your pass to tonight's game. We will tell you everything you need to know to get you ready for Monday Night Football. Don't you even think about touching that dial.
you the very best MLB coverage, including the playoffs and the 2008 World Series. Major League Baseball, only on NASN. Newman gets the run on the outside. Newman to the lead. Bush to second. Stewart goes back to third. Ryan Newman, Roger Penske. Wow. Win the Daytona 500. A long dry spell for this driver. He will win the 50th Daytona 500. Looks like a power play, huh, Mike? Sure does. ESPN 360. Wherever and whenever you're online, you're at the game. Yes, it's a glove. It's a baseball glove. For Wilson gloves and much, much more, visit NASN.com, your home for North American sports merchandise. So, anyone good? Yeah. I got Ellis, Penny, and K-Mac, three-time architect of the year. Who'd you get? There are over 380,000 NCAA student athletes. Check it out. The Jay Campbell rookie card. No way! That guy dominates in the lab. Yeah. And just about all of them will be going pro in something other than sports. I didn't know he minded in French. fast food. It's Wendy's. Now it's time to bring the game to you. Your field pass to tonight's game and we start Tommy with Tony Romo and I don't think anybody you know, if you're waiting for him. Well it's just a flash in the pen. Not the case and he's got such a great demeanor. Absolutely the ignition switch for the Dallas Cowboy offense two time pro bowler already does a great job of spreading the ball around people think that he eyeballs T.O. But he spreads the ball to everybody. He's got outstanding mobility. He just needs to take them a little further in the playoffs. Tony Romo, outstanding quarterback. All right, guys, Steve Young. Hey, Donovan McNabb, fully healthy. Just how much should the Cowboys, Steve, be worried? They should be worried quite a bit, get in for quite a few more years. Do you think he's been in the league 10 years? He's 31 years old. He could be halfway right now, staying healthy. The Eagles have never given him the great weapons other than that year with Terrell Owens. And look what his production has been. That's true. The Cowboys should be worried tonight, and they should be worried into the future because I think this guy's going to be around a lot longer than people realize, and I wish they would give him that one or two great receivers to make the difference. Cowboy running back Marion Barber injured. It's not the first time a Cowboy back has had a rib cage cartilage injury. Emmett, you had it. How exactly will this affect Marion tonight? You know, it's going to it's going to hinder his breathing a little bit. And plus, when he hit the ground, it's probably going to be one of those kind of things that goes in and out. And it's going to be more bothersome than it is going to hurt him. Then it's going to hurt him. But Marion Barber, this is the kind of game that a guy like Marion Barber wants to play in. This is the kind of game that I'd love to play in because of the intensity and everything that he's bringing to the table. He's going to do a great job for the Cowboys tonight because of the physicality of the ball game. Fellas, the he runs tough, and boy, does Brian Westbrook just run it. And talk about 2,000 yards once upon a time. Uh, all per, you know, in receiving and rushing, coach, I know you love him. Uh, outstanding football player, but one thing about football is a game of mismatches. When you create these mismatches, I'll tell you, Andy Reid does it as well as anybody. This guy, he'll get him in space, he'll get him on linebacking, he'll get him on safety, he'll get him on corners, and he'll be able to take advantage of him. This guy's one heck of a football player. He won't cover him every play because the Eagles have outstanding corners, but Asante Samuel 
huge off-season acquisition, Philadelphia, to play against Terrell Owens. Chris, and, you know, Owens has had his, a, a good game or two against Samuel. Nine catchers in that Super Bowl. Last year, Cowboys, Patriots, six for 66 in a TD. Yeah, and Philadelphia management, they know what they're getting. Asante Samuels, truly one of the elite cornerbacks in the National Football League. And for $57 million, they're hoping that it gets them some of that cat coverage, Boom. So that, uh, $57 million to get cat coverage, uh, I got that cat right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't drop that cat. Or was it a panther? I forget what that was. Uh, key, this Sean Jackson, we talked about Eddie Royal, a second-round draft pick, Denver. Deshaun Jackson, a guy from Cal, got standing O last week when they introduced the offense in Philadelphia. And he gives Andy Reid and Donovan McNair a, a, a new toy to play with. They haven't had that big down the field threat. He comes in there last week. He had 100, over 100 yards against the Rams. It was the Rams. The only reason why he's in this position with the Philadelphia Eagles, because this kid is light. You know, you look at his frame, he's 175 pounds, probably soaking wet, but he has a big heart. He plays big in college and big games. Now we have an opportunity to play big here on Monday night. And on special teams, where the Eagles haven't had big return guys the last couple years, Tom, just do it once in case Adam Jones gets <laughs> <laughs> We're going to pick the game when we come back. <laughs> Monday Night Countdown. Delivered by UPS. What can Brown do for you? And in part by the GMC Sierra. Watch SportsCenter after the game for the GMC Sierra Defensive Player of the Week nominees. The stage is set for the opening weekend of a new NHL season. And this year, the stars are gathering for the premier events in the great cities of Prague and Stockholm. The NHL returns. Catch all the excitement this October on NASN. careful with now going into turn one. And Jeff Leader. Gordon has spun around with two laps to go. Unbelievable turn one again in the leader. Feeling the pressure from Tony Stewart. Tony Stewart winner of the Nextel Cup at Watkins Glen. We just had to keep the pressure on Jeff and hope he made a mistake and that's what happened. For Reebok official NFL jerseys and much more, visit NASN.com. NASN, the number one source for all your NFL coverage this season. We kick off each week with Sunday NFL Countdown, followed by up to three live games, including the top matchups from across the league. Mondays continue with two first-run games, followed by NFL Primetime and Monday Night Countdown with all the top stories from Sunday and all the buzz leading into the live game on Monday Night Football. Don't miss all the latest news, analysis, and features weekdays with NFL Total Access. Plus bonus coverage with NFL Game Day, Top 10, and Who Is. And come playoff time, we've got you covered with even more live games as the AFC and the NFC crown their champions with the Wild Card, Divisional, and Conference Championships. And the greatest game of them all, Super Bowl 43, live from Tampa, Florida. Plus your annual trip to the Pro Bowl in Hawaii. The NFL this season on NASN. to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month here in the 28th and final Monday night game at Texas Stadium. We now send it for our national anthem to Texas Stadium PA announcer George Dunham. George. Please rise as we honor America with the singing of our national anthem. Tonight's featured entertainer is 20-year-old pop sensation Cat DeLuna. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early lights what 
Producer Mark Wiener and Scott Clark asked Tom Jackson and I, he, they somehow heard us say Vikings instead. I don't know how that happened. Nice. Anyway, guys, who's winning tonight? Play, play the victim. Nice job, <laughs> Stu. All right, look, I told you that in September the Cowboys are the front runners, and they're going to front run all the way to January. The question I want to know is how they play in January. In September, they're going to win the football game. And you know what, Steve? If they are the front runner tonight, it has to stop the losing. They lost the last two ball games here in Texas Stadium against the Philadelphia Eagles. And tonight it stops going to Cowboys. All right, I'm saying it's all even, so I go to my second progression. Backup quarterbacks. For Philly, it's Kevin Cobb, a second-year guy. For Dallas, it's 40-year-old Brad Johnson, but he won Super Bowl 37, so I go Cowboys. I know, it's random. Coach, what do you think? I'm making no friends in Dallas, so I'm going with the Philadelphia Eagles. I <laughs> and I'm going to, I'm going to Philadelphia Eagles. McNabb, Andy Reid. I mean, I got to go with the Eagles. I love Coach. I'm going with the Cowboys. The, the ringmaster that runs the circus, people don't talk about it, Wade is, is the glue to keep this whole thing together in Dallas. Well, 13 Pro Bowlers. This is the only team I've ever seen with 13 Pro Bowlers. I don't know how you can continue to lose at home and expect to be there at the end, so I'm picking the Cowboys. Are they going to be tougher physically and sharper mentally, Eagles? You better be. Are the Cowboys going to get the penalties that Emmett talked about? You know what? I think we look to the youngster. Big punt return. Go deep a little bit to Deshaun Jackson. Philly 34, <laughs> Dallas 31. Boomer! Boomer! <laughs> Boomer. 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 Look at this. Just Pennsylvania and Delaware with Biden. What happened going, to New Jersey? Oh, well, New Jersey's undecided. <laughs> I don't, I mean, I don't know what does that possible. mean? But everything else, 47 states go to the Cowboys, two to the Eagles, one to seven. But I think Alaska and Hawaii, the polls are still open. Undecided. It's I love it. It's going to be fun, man. See, we, it's all the time we have for Monday Night Countdown for Tom and for Chris and for Key and for Get Coach you a popcorn. Key, where the See popcorn? You at the half for prime Key, time. Key. At halftime. <laughs> Early season NFC showdown. Eagles, Cowboys, Dallas last home opener at Texas Stadium. Here's Mike Tirico. Thank you, Chris. It is the final season at Texas Stadium. No better way to start it than with a very